Welcome. There's been a lot of interest in backup home generators lately. And for good reason. With weather and natural disasters, people think, I am not prepared for the power to be out for extended periods of time. I want to connect a generator to my house. And I want to keep my family warm. Well, it's a complicated subject. I'm going to try and do this very quickly. So if you have any questions about what I'm saying, just ask. Your first question might be, what makes me qualified to even talk about this subject? Well, I'm a senior electrical engineer and I design commercial buildings. Primarily, I design hospitals and I've spent the last 15 years becoming a national expert in emergency power systems and generators in general. So yes, I am qualified to have this conversation with you. In addition, I like actually wiring things. I like working on things with my hands. So I understand how and why things work and I physically make them work. So let's talk about the options that you have. I'm gonna spend a very little amount of time on this because you have the whole home generator type and those are super cool, right? You buy one big thing and it automatically turns on and off and it automatically starts and it automatically stops, it tests itself, it's fantastic. If you can afford it, go for it. There's no reason not to. But if you don't want to spend five to seven, eight thousand dollars on a whole home generator to have it installed by an electrician, I don't blame you. Right? Now, if you want to go the other route and do small and super small and portable, then yeah, for a couple hundred bucks, you can buy a really small generator, inverter type or a standard gasoline type, and just run some extension cords out to your appliances. Pick them up that way. Not a problem. If that's your game, go for it. Most of us, however, would like something in the middle. We don't want to spend more than two grand, ideally around a thousand dollars. And we'd like to find a way to connect it to our panel in our home so we can decide what we want to run when. The question is how to do that safely. Now there's actually a variety of ways that you can do this. One way is to simply get a meter socket extension and plug your portable generator into your meter socket extension, and then voila, you've back fed your entire panel. Now, of course, you have to understand that your entire panel is most likely able to overload that small portable generator. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of math to figure out what you can and can't put on it. And if you overload it, the generator is gonna shut off and you're gonna learn the hard way. And you have to restart your generator with those loads turned off and then slowly mitigate them, add them on and off. Now the meter socket extension is pretty slick, right? You don't have to rewire your panel. You don't have to even really bring in an electrician, but you do have to bring in the utility company and they have to approve this product. The companies that make it will understand ahead of time whether your utility company has pre-approved it and it's gonna be a conversation with them regardless, but that's okay. Honestly, if you want to do your own electrical work, you should be used to calling your utility company anyway. I don't recommend that anybody open up their electrical panel while it's hot. And turning off the main on your panel does not de-energize everything in the panel. The incoming lugs are still energized and they'll kill you. I will express the sincere need for you to be super careful here. I'm not teaching you how to do this. I'm not authorizing you to do this. I'm telling you that you should hire a professional. A licensed electrician should perform all the work inside the panel of your home. Now, again, this whole meter or socket extension trick, it's pretty slick. The, meet, the utility company might even install it for you. And then all you gotta do is run your extension cord to your meter socket. And it'll accept 30 amp to 50 amp plugs, twist locker and straight, bl straight blade, depending on the generator that you have. Now let's say that isn't available to you and you just simply want to have a, a breaker in your panel coming from your generator and you'll just turn the main off and turn the generator breaker on. You have to have a mechanical interlock to prevent you from ever possibly closing both at the same time for two reasons. One, you'll destroy your generator, possibly the panel and, and injure or kill anyone that's nearby either of those if the generator and the utility were parallel at the same time. Meaning utility power came back and the generator was also running and connected, the generator is going to lose. Additionally, if you backfeed the line, you could kill alignment. 
When the power's out, they test that. They think the power's off. They think it's safe to touch. Now, they take a lot of precautions, mind you, but still, never backfeed the utility, ever. So you're left with a mechanical means of actually saying generator or utility. The problem here, of course, is that when the utility power comes back, you're not gonna know because the main's off. Maybe your utility company will give you a phone call or an email and let you know, hey, power's back on. That way you can say, okay, let's check the neighbor's houses. Yep, looks like neighbor's got power. Let's go ahead and shut the generator off. Let's transfer back to the main utility. Another option for you would be to install a small sub panel. Now you can buy these as generator transfer switch kits, or you could just simply get a, you know, $60 sub panel, have it installed next to your main panel, and do the mechanical generator interlock. The important thing to understand about this option is it actually makes you choose which loads you want on the generator at that time. There's no flexibility in like picking anything else up. So you're gonna obviously do your refrigerators, your freezers, maybe your garage doors, your furnace if it's gas. If your furnace is electric, keep in mind that draws a ton of power. If your water heater is electric, it draws a ton of power, right? Three, four, six, seven, ten 10 kW, whatever it is, whatever your house has, you need to take that into consideration with your generator selection. Now there's plenty of generator like sizing connect calculation tools. I don't need to go into that with you. You can look that up. If you would like to connect extension cords to your appliances, not a problem. You can still do that with a larger generator. But what about your furnaces? What about the fixed hardwired appliances? Well, there's this, the easy generator switch. Pretty slick, right? It's a little overpriced at hundred bucks, but hey, someone's done all the trouble for you of building a nice little tidy box. You can locate it at your panel or you can locate it at the load itself, like the furnace, whichever's closer. And it's got a recessed male receptacle, which is super handy because you're gonna have a female end of an extension cord to use anyway. So standard extension cords can be used and they can connect from a generator to a hardwired load and it'll give you a safe way to toggle between generator or utility. They're actually super slick and they're easy to install and fairly safe for you to install if you're installing them at the load itself, provided you still have to, of course, understand how electricity works and get a permit from your local utility. In every case, your local utility and your local electrical inspector should know what you're doing. They should inspect the work that you do. Getting a permit is cheap. It's only 10, 20, 30 bucks. And it ensures that what you're doing is safe, whether you're a professional or a novice. Always have stuff inspected and always get the city's blessing. It's for your liability and the safety of anyone that could own the home later on. Now we wanna make sure that we choose the right generator for our location. So what does that mean? Well, fuel is a big consideration. Gasoline's good for six months untreated, maybe a year with some stabilizer, but beyond that, it's not any good. And you certainly don't wanna put old gasoline inside your four cycle engine because that carburetor is not gonna like it and it's gonna stop working for you. And then you're not gonna have a generator that does anything except look like a giant brick. So you're gonna to wanna to take the time to understand what fuel you have available. Now propane, can be pretty handy. It can be stored for long periods of time, but you have to be able to have access to propane. And not just the 20 gallon little belly tanks that you might use for your grill. For a generator, you're probably gonna wanna look at 40 or 60, 80, 100 gallon, or pound, I should say, not gallon, 100 pound tanks. 40 pound tanks are pretty reasonable. You can move them around, but obviously you're gonna burn through them a little faster. Now you have to be able to get these refilled. While propane can sit for a couple of years, no problem, eventually, in an outage, you can maybe do a 40 pound tank every day, day and a half, maybe two if you're conservative, but you're gonna have to get them refilled in an extended outage. And if it's that long, your local utility stores and hardware stores might not actually have power either. They might be closed. So you might have to go to another radius. You should always know, where can I get my replacement fuel in a local, 50, 100 mile radius, and just have them on hand. In addition to having things on hand, make sure that everybody who could ever be in your house at any point in time understands how the generator works. 
it seems silly, but in the moment, and you're not there, does the whoever's home understand how to connect the system? If you're on vacation, does whoever's watching your house understand how to connect the system? Making it safe also means making it simple. You, in the heat of the moment, might forget those steps, which is why we need mechanical safety interlocks to ensure, even if you do things out of order, you're not going to kill yourself or anybody else. Now, whole home generators are great because they will start and stop on their own, but they still do require maintenance. Everything with an engine requires maintenance. Batteries fail after a certain number of years. Engines need oil to be replaced. While the whole home generators will test themselves, they still do need maintenance. Now, if you don't understand anything that I've said, you're probably going to want to pay an electrician and pay a company to maintain and service the generator for you. Because, in all fairness, if you don't understand what's going on, you're going to pay somebody that has taken the time to do just that. Now, keep in mind that ground fault is important to understand. Ground fault is the same kind of thing that we see when we electrocute ourselves in water. Electricity flows through our body into the ground and then comes back to the source of power. Ground fault circuit interrupters, or GFCI, will prevent us from being electrocuted. It's pretty cool. Now, in order to work, it requires a continuous path. So generator bonding is a topic that requires conversation. Whatever generator you buy, it's either going to have an equipment bonding connection or it's not. And in its instructions, it's going to tell you whether or not you need to bond the frame to your home grounding system. So your home is grounded to like your water pipes and other as aspects of the earth to give it a reference and also a fault path. Ground fault circuit interrupters are required on anything that's outside or in wet locations, kitchens, bathrooms, garages, etc. And they prevent you from being electrocuted. It requires the ground problem be present in your extension cords and the corded equipment that you're working with. Never ever ever use an extension cord with a ground plug cut off. Never ever ever use a generator with an ungrounded adapter. Always make sure that grounding is present. And if grounding is not present in your system, consult your electrician and your building inspector and ask them what is the safest way for you to implement a generator in this application. It's important that when you're playing around with electricity, and by playing I mean touching it and moving stuff around, you don't kill yourself or somebody else. So be careful. If you have any questions, I'm happy to ask. If you have a specific scenario, I'm happy to answer it. If you want to know what generator you should buy, refer to the video and start it over. I'm not telling you what you need to buy. I'm just simply explaining the ways that you can connect generators to your home. Remember, the calculators are widely available. Generac and Kohler are large scale generator manufacturers that also make stuff for your house. And they do a pretty good job of providing a ton of resources for you to pick from. In addition, they have really nice customer service. If you have a lot of questions, they're happy to find a solution for you. While Colo doesn't do portable units, Generac certainly does. Now there are a variety of other manufacturers. There's stuff on Amazon, Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Lowe's. You can buy generators almost anywhere. An engine is an engine. A generator is a generator. You're not necessarily going to buy something of higher quality simply because you spend more. While I like Honda a lot, I buy their cars and their mowers and other things that have their engines. When it comes to a generator, is it worth the extra $5,000? I don't know, it's up to you. What I will tell you is that the selection that you make requires maintenance regardless of what name is on the side. And some require more than others. Some parts are made cheaper than others. So don't be frustrated, but just accept that whatever you're willing to pay for, you're going to get. Plain and simple. Now you can certainly walk away from this conversation with the understanding that you can connect to your house with a whole home transfer switch, with a sub panel, with a sub transfer switch panel right, that some manufacturers make, with a meter extension, with an easy generator switch, 
or just plain extension cords. Whichever solution you come up with should be safe and easily implemented by whomever is going to be in the home at that time. Now again, happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks for watching.